It's on deck here in the Rockies first inning. And Helton was a first round pick. He was eighth overall back in 1995. The 2 2 pitch from Schilling. Outside ball three, and it's a full count. Looks like Schilling turns the fastball over just a little bit and just missed the outside corner. Ball four, he walks him. So the first walk of the night allowed by Kurt Schilling. Hilton down to first base and it's first and third now a two way here in the first inning and gonna bring up Garrett Atkins a third baseman. Atkins has reached base safely with a hit or a walk in 13 straight games. A chance here to do some early damage as the Rockies have runners at the corners and two down here in the top half of the first inning. Ball one outside to Atkins. Well, by the look of the crowd, if you see this game sometime next offseason, maybe as a classic, we don't know that yet, you will never guess it's mid June <laughs> by what the folks are wearing tonight to this ball game. It really is amazing that it is mid June and it is this chilly here at Fenway Park tonight with the breeze blowing straight in. And the pitcher striking the count one and one. This player profile is brought to you by Sovereign Bank, the official bank of the Red Sox cable network. Atkins last year hitting a 320 with 27 home runs, a breakout season for him. Not too much lower numbers over his first four seasons in the majors. Gathered by Veritek, and it's two and one. Right now Schilling having a little trouble with the splitter. It's what he walked Helton on. And of course that one bouncing in the dirt. Veritek expecting the split finger. Naturally it gets down a little bit quicker. Almost anticipating that pitch to be in the dirt. Tavares at third base. Helton at first base with two down. Line towards the gap in left center field. Tavares scores from third base. As Todd Helton's headed for third base, he'll be stopped there. It's an RBI double for Garrett Atkins, and the Rockies take a 1 0 lead here in the first inning. Now, well, a big two out base hit by Atkins. He gets the fastball from Schilling. It was supposed to be in. It stays out of a plate, and the line shot between Ramirez and Coco Crisp. Crisp will chase that ball down, and uh, that'll hold Helton at third base. But the Rockies score first here tonight. So second and third now two down a chance for Brad Hopp the right fielder. Opposite safely in 16 of the last 19 games. And a swing and a miss to the first one from Schilling. Starting the night hitting at 297 with eight homers and 38 runs batted in. Rockies are 11th in the National League in batting average. As this pitch is in there for strike over the outside corner, it's one and one. Has surrendered a run here in the first, trying to prevent any further damage. And does as he strikes out Brad Hopp to end things in the first. They leave two in scoring position, but it's the Rockies on top, one nothing. Back at Fenway, the Rockies on top, one nothing as we head to the last half of the first inning. And it's Coco Crisp leading it off as the starting pitcher is brought to you by Panasonic. And tonight for the Rockies, it's Josh Fogg. That's been a tough season so far for Fogg. He is on a four game losing streak. His uh, record is one and five with an ERA of 5.06. He has faced the Red Sox once before. 
before. That was back in 2005 as a member of the Pittsburgh Pirates. And no decision in that ball game against Boston. I think the two best pitches for Fogg are his slider and his changeup. He's just thrown back to back changeups to Coco Crisp. This just four for his last 28 over the last eight games. Evens up at two and two. You know, it lasted one day with uh, Dustin Pedroia at the top of the Red Sox order. Coco Crisp in there tonight. Alex Cora in the lineup tonight, so it has changed once again for the Red Sox at the top of the order, at least for tonight. Well, they wanted to get Cora in there tonight because he's five for nine in his career with a home run against Fogg. Tavares has it sized up in center field and he puts it away for out number one. Let's check out the rest of the Red Sox starting nine brought to you by New England Dodge dealers. Kevin Euclid's at first base bat second with David Ortiz a designated hitter. Manny Ramirez in left field. J.D. Drew in right. Mike Lowell at third base. Jason Veritek doing the catching batting seventh. And Alex Cora as we mentioned playing at second base batting eighth. Julio Lugo for the second straight night in the nine spot. And he's at shortstop tonight for Boston. Kevin Euclid takes the strike from Josh Fogg who has been ahead of each of the first two hitters he's faced tonight. Euclid at 335 eight homers and 33 runs batted in. Broken ball in there for a strike and it's one and two. The Euclid last night with a two out RBI to drive in the first Red Sox run of the night. Aaron Cook had scored Julio Lugo at the time gave the Red Sox a 1-0 advantage. That would hold up until the top of the eighth. Brad Hopp coming on to make the catch and there's two down. Now the Rockies defense is brought to you by a New England Ford dealers. They are number one in the National League. They've only made 24 errors on the season. Garrett Atkins at third base. Troy Tulowitzki the shortstop. Kaz Matsui at second and Todd Helton the first baseman. Holiday to Ferris and Hopp in the outfield. And Tori Abla doing the catching for Josh Fogg. Well, uh, thank you very much. Happy birthday, Barbara Ann. I've got a major announcement coming up, too, as my first move as wow. president of Red Sox Nation. That didn't take long. No, I told you. Things are happening very quickly in this new administration. It's, it's, it's going to be a good one, too. David Ortiz checks in with two outs and nobody on. We plan for an inning for those of us who come in and out at times during the game. Is, you, is there one inning you could point to where we may be able to map this out? Are you gonna? It's another Russ can tells me. Oh, okay. That, I mean, he directs. I mean, he produces what we do. When he says go, I go. Outside three and zero oh, to Big Poppy. Ortiz three for three in the game last night with a double and a walk. Sixth time this season he's had three or more hits in a contest. Last night they did not start the game in a shift for Ortiz. Tonight they do and he sends it out towards right center field. It is hop on the run into the slide and he makes the catch out there in right center field. Red Sox down in order three fly ball outs it's one nothing Rockies. Top half of the second inning back at Fenway is the bottom third of the Rockies order featured here in the second inning. As Colorado out to the one nothing advantage against Kurt Schilling tonight. Ryan Spielborg's leading it off the designated hitter. Swings of the 0 1 pitch. And it's the second baseman Cora with Schilling covering that time Euclid wanted all the way over towards second one away. Well there's a great new look to the Red Sox Nation program in 2007 and as new rewards gifts and unique ticket opportunities become part of the global fan base that has made their citizenship in Red Sox Nation official visit Red Sox .com today. So. This is the deal Don. 
And this is available only to Red, uh, Red Sox Nation members, and you can still become one. You can go there right now and still sign up to be one. But for Sunday's game against the Giants, thanks to the hard work of Sam Kennedy and the kindness of Tom Werner, he is giving up four personal his four personal seats for Sunday. Tom is, and they will randomly be picked. They will be announced on Saturday morning who wins those four seats and you can uh, find the winners at RedSox.com or the Remy report. So that's my first act giving away wow. four of Tom's personal seats for the Sunday game here against the Giants. Barry Bonds and the Giants. That's tough to beat. Where are those seats do you know off the top of your head. Well, I believe that they're going to be somewhere near that Red Sox dugout right that's where his personal seats are. There are others, but uh, I'm guessing they might be somewhere in this area here. Oh, that's quite good. This one chopped down the third baseline. It is a fair ball out of the reach of Lowell. There's the call coming from Bruce Freming. It's in the corner, man. He's got to go dig it out. Tori Elba pulls it up around second base. Got himself a double. And in scoring position with one away here for the Rockies. He's had a good series, two for three last night. Lowell way off that line against him, and that big bounce right over third base into the backside of Bruce Fremming, the umpire. Rolls all the way down to the 310. By the time Manny can chase it down, it's the double. And he is now six for 11 in his career as Terry Alber against Schilling. So one away. Here is Troy Tulowitzki. 261, three homers and 27 runs batted in. So again, getting back to those free tickets, Don, just for a second. If you were a member of Red Sox Nation now, you need not apply again. But if you want a chance to win these, become a member. You can still click on RedSox.com right now and you can become a member and you have a chance to win these four tickets. Another chopper, another fair ball. This one will kick off the boxes. Tori Elba stopped at third base as Lowell runs it down. This time it's a single for Tulowitzki. And same type of place just inside the line down this third baseline. And Lowell this time runs it down. Now they're wearing out the third base, almost the same position as Lowell playing off the line. Now the backhanded play gets off his glove. That will slow it down enough so it hits off that wall and they cannot score Tori Elba. So it's first and third, and Tavares now coming up with one away. And Tavares with an infield hit in the first inning, reached second on the errant throw by Julio Lugo. He come around to score, as this time he fouls it off the shin guard at Jason Veritek. League leaders are brought to you by Olympia Sports. And infield hits. Lee Tavares with 26. Juan Pierre, who usually leads in that category, the LA Dodgers with 18. And then behind it, but Tavares far and away. And the league leader in infield hits. Got another one tonight. And what do all those guys have in common? They're all leadoff guys. They can all run. Guys, they, they can all run. run. <laughs> Well, four hits already tonight for the Rockies. Two of them coming in this inning. They stranded two in scoring position last inning. A late swing this time by Tavares. Shoots it just beyond the photographer's well down the right field line. Now he leads the majors with 19 bun hits. No other player has more than six bun hits. He's got 19 of them. In the beginning of the end of April, on April the 25th, he's hit at 360 cents. Mentioned in the top 10, he checks in at 10th in the National League, fouls another one off Veritek. And it's a ball and two strikes. Once again, they're trying to go upstairs with that fastball ahead in the count, and this time Tavares is able to foul it off. Looks like it goes right off the mask of Winters, the home plate umpire.
Well, Bruce Fremen got through the night last night without a foul tip hitting him in the arm. But uh, Mike Winter struck on that one as he got him in the mass. Fly ball to right field. J.D. Drew over towards the line. Has himself set, makes the catch, stopping, making a bid was Tori Elbin going back. Again, trying to draw that throw. The throw came in, and he stopped about halfway down the line and retreated. Yeah, and again, you know, they don't have great, great speed at third base. And J.D. Drew has a lot of ground to cover, but watch when he catches the ball, how he gets his uh, body in a position to make the throw. Once the third base coach sees that, he has to hold the base runner. Now, Veritek had no idea. He's diving for home plate. But the runner was not going. As that comes with reputation too. You know they know J.D. Drew from the National League. And the combination of his throwing arm and the lack of speed at third base holds the runner at third. So first and third now for the Rockies two down in the inning and it was Kaz Matsui grounded out to second base first time up. Schilling has had to pitch through some trouble here in the first two innings. Matsui swats at it, sends it foul off to the left. Tori Elba at third base to Lewitsky at first base and two down here in the top half of the second inning. I'll tell you what that's a mouthful. <laughs> this thing up top and it's a ball and a strike. Two down and runners in scoring position here, something that Matsui has done very well. Nine for 17. Eight RBIs with two outs and runners in scoring position. It's first and third this time, two down. Fouls it off to the left, and it's one and two. Doesn't get any easier on deck, Matt Holiday. Showing ahead a ball and two strikes, two down here in the second inning. Quick check to first and diving back safely is Tulowitzki. Well, sometimes with two strikes and two outs, you attempt a double steal. And certainly Schilling aware of that. Makes the pickoff attempt at first base. Matsui hits it hard and by the dive of Lugo. From third comes Tori Elba with the second Rockies run. And it's a 2 0 Colorado lead. And a two out RBI for Kaz Matsui. And that's two impressive uh, at bats for him with two strikes. The first time moving a runner along, hooking the ball, this time slapping it the other way by the dive of Lugo. So a big two out base hit, uh, both runs so far in this game coming with two outs. So two down runners at first and second down. Here's Matt Holliday as Schilling goes off the backside of the mound. And Kurt Schilling already up to 40 pitches. An inning and two thirds so far tonight. And the complete game victory through an even 100 pitches last time out against Oakland. Take a look at Matt Suey's first at bat. He had two strikes on him. He gets a split it. Now he's got to move a runner along, so he reaches out, hooks the ball, pulls it, and gets the job done. And then with two strikes and his following at bat, gets a fastball and slaps it the other way to drive in a run. That is pretty impressive. Getting that over to the right side. Yeah, that that's not an easy pitch to pull. Holiday grounds it foul. 
And it's a ball and a strike to the league leader in the National League and batting average coming in tonight 346. And Maglio Ordonez and Jorge Posada, the only guys with higher averages in the majors. Ordonez starting the day hitting at 362, while Posada at 353 for the Yankees. And those Tigers continue to score runs. Uh, number one in the league in runs scored. Of course, they had that no hitter from uh, Verlander last night. First no hitter for the Tigers in 23 years. Last one was in 1984. And Justin Verlander getting it done last night against the Brewers. Uh, Schilling spirals off the backside of the mound, does not throw. Who was it 84? Was it Jack Morris? Yes, Jack Morris, yep. Yeah. Veritek out to talk to Schilling. A lot of pitches early in this one for Kurt Schilling. And not yet out of the second inning. Covidian is a proud sponsor of the Boston Red Sox and the Red Sox Foundation, helping to raise money for life saving cancer research. One and two, the count to Matt Holliday. Chops it off the plate down the third baseline. Lowell bare hands and throws. Not in time. Gets away from Euclid down the line. It'll score a run as Tulowitzki comes in. Stopping is Matsui at third base as Holiday reaches. And it's a 3 0 Colorado lead. You know, when Lowell uh, fielded this ball with his bare hand, I didn't think he was going to throw it. And it slips out of his hand. Euclid tries to backhand it. It gets by him. And that's going to give the Rockies another run. They're going to uh, go as a base hit and also an error on Lowell, his 12th of the season. Never got a grip on it. You could see it when he picked it up with his bare hand. It was almost like throwing a change up to first base. It ties him for the second most he's ever had in his career in a season. He had 12 in 2000. His career high is 14. He did that in 2002. He's a member of the Florida Marlins. And remarkable that here we sit on June 13th. And another error here for him gives him 12 on the season at six all of last year. First and third now. And the 0 1 pitch to Helton's in there for a strike. It's 0 and 2. Helton walked in his first at bat back in the first inning. The only walk so far tonight given up by Kurt Schilling. Who did not walk anybody in his last outing. And if you go back now, some four outings, he only walked one in the last four outings coming into tonight. And that was against the Yankees in his five inning after he walked one. Runner at first goes, Helton fouls it off to the right. And the Rockies have very good with their advantages so far tonight as they are four for eight with runners in scoring position and we're just in the second inning. And trying to keep the pressure on the Red Sox by sending Holiday at first base. He's got three steals on the season. Inside one and two now to Helton. Evens up now two and two inside again. Well, last night we went through many of the accolades throughout his career that Todd Helton has had and the incredible numbers he's been able, able to rack up flirting with 400 at times. The highest batting average he's ever finished up with in a season 2000 he hit 372 to end the year. 
And win the batting title back in 2000. Was down 0 2, but it's a full count now. That's the pitch that Schilling tried to get him last time, the splitter. He ended up walking him on that pitch. Splitter again, running the count to 3 and 2. I don't tell if that was a splitter or maybe just a straight change. 50 pitches for Kurt Schilling, an inning and two thirds deep. Helton grounds it right side. Cora backs up on it and throws him out with the damage done. The Rockies come away with a pair. Through an inning and a half, it is three to nothing, Colorado. Join Nesson in New England Sports Museum for the sixth annual tradition to honor local sports legends, hosted by Dale Arnold and Michael Holly. This year, the event pays tribute to Ray Borg, Stanley Morgan, Cedric Maxwell, and the 1967 Boston Red Sox. Honor the tradition Saturday night at 8 only on Nesson. That should be very good. Last half of the second inning back at Fenway. It's 3 to nothing now. The Rockies on top. Red Sox went down in order in the first inning on three fly ball outs. Ramirez, Drew, and Lowell expected here in the bottom of the second. And starting the night hitting at 289. Eight homers and 33 runs batted in. Eighteen games hitting at 410. The average steadily has been climbing 289 as the game starts tonight. Drew waits on deck. Red Sox bat here in the second inning. Is a career 307 average with 43 homers and 130 RBIs in 139 games in interleague play. Ranked second all time in RBIs in interleague games behind Carlos Delgado and ahead of Jim Tomey with 128s. Tied for the most interleague home runs all time behind Tomey and tied with Delgado as he swings and misses and strikes out this time. First strikeout for Josh Fogg. Looked like a backup slider this time. A pitch that just stayed inside. It's supposed to be down and away, but it stays up and in on Manny and no contact. Fox certainly not a big strikeout pitcher. Strikeout high in the season is five. He's done that a couple of times. Now sometimes you make a mistake with a pitch like that, but it doesn't get hit. J.D. Drew driving in the winning run last night. The sacrifice fly in the eighth inning. Eight RBIs now in the last four games for the Red Sox right fielder. Got it going in Arizona. Had three hits on Friday night and three on Saturday in Arizona. As this one is lined to the second baseman Matsui. And there's two away in the second inning. Well, this Father's Day surprised your dad with a gift from the Boston Globe store. You'll find new books like Fenway and Senior Year by Dan Shaughnessy, plus great book, sports memorabilia, photos, and more. Shop for dad at the Boston Globe store online or call 888-665-2667. What are you hoping for on Father's Day, Don? I'm hoping for that grill that we were talking about earlier this season. Uh, the six-piece grill. The Bruins grill, yeah, right? Still waiting on that. Nice barbecue set. That would be a nice gift. Do you have anything you have your eye on that you think you're going to get? Yeah, Gulfstream 4, like my friend Bob Levine's. I would love one of those. <laughs> Very affordable. Mike Lowell drives one to deep left field, and that is a towering blast for Lowell into the monster seats. Lowell's 12th home run of the year as the Red Sox on the board.
This time it's a curveball from Fogg and hangs right out over the plate. Mike Lowell does not miss this mistake and takes it up into the monster seats against the wind here at Fenway Park. That is the eighth home run that Fogg has allowed this season. And as Don mentioned, number 12 for Lowell. Now Jason Veritek, the base is empty, two down. And the frustration that Lowell has had this season defensively, something that really he's never dealt with before. The offense has been spectacular for him. Veritek ahead, 2 0. Starts tonight at 267, seven homers. And 31 runs batted in. Well, check course with last night off. Doug Marabelli doing the catching for Tim Wakefield in the game last night. A great game last Saturday in Arizona. As he drove in three of Boston's four runs. You know, a two run home run in that game, the middle game. Cora waiting on deck batting eighth tonight. Swing and a miss and a full count. No fastball for Veritek. A change up on the hit is 3 1 count. Ball four. And down to first base for the first walk of the night allowed by Fogg. And FW Webb is proud to be official supplier of plumbing, heating, and cooling supplies for the Boston Red Sox. To learn more about how FW Webb can help you, contact your local professional contractor or visit FWWebb.com. FW Webb, we've got it. Well, two quick outs to begin the inning for Josh Fogg. Striking out Ramirez and getting Drew to ground out, but since then Lowell with a home run, Veritek a walk, and here's Alex Cora. Cora, who started the year on fire, is now just three for his last 28, and the average has dropped down to 287. Two homers and 13 runs batted in. Part of the reason that he is in the lineup tonight, five for nine, the home run against Josh Fogg. The Red Sox have had trouble scoring runs. We talk about it off the top tonight. They have scored two runs or less in five of their last seven games and hit at 226 over the last seven contests. So fourth in the league in runs scored. And unfortunately, been receiving very good starting pitching in a lot of the games in which they've been unable to score a great deal. And last night, a classic example of just that. They're able to score just the two runs, but uh, the great effort by Tim Wakefield. To right field, Brad Hop in a step or two makes the grab that ends the inning. A home run for Mike Lowell has the Red Sox on the board, but it's three to one Rockies at the end of two. Aflac, Olympia Sports, the official sporting goods retailer, the New England Sports Network, and by Dunkin' Donuts. Top of the third inning back at Fenway Park, it's a three-one Rockies lead. And Kirk Schilling has thrown now 52 pitches through two plus innings. Finds himself trailing by two runs as he takes the hill here in the third inning to deal with Garrett Atkins, Brad Hopp, and Ryan Spillboards. As Atkins pops it up into shallow right field. And Drew coming in to make the catch. Let's check in with Tina Servasio. Tina? Don, in the first inning, Jerry mentioned how Schilling was struggling with his splitter versus Garrett Atkins, and again in the second inning versus Helton. Well, last Thursday in Oakland, that splitter was working so well for Schilling, and Terry Francona explains when Kurt's split is on, it could dictate the pace of his entire outing. 
I think when he feels go of the split, it always gives him a place to go. You know, he manages to be a good pitcher a lot of times, even when he doesn't have it. But when he has, it's like an insurance little blanket there. He knows he can go to it and get a swing and miss, which makes him work less. When Kurt is successful this season, it's predicated on two things, his fastball command and his splitter. Now, two examples. It was back in Minnesota on May 6th when Kurt felt he reached the best command of his fastball. And then on May 28th versus Cleveland, John Farrell had tweaked Kurt's grip on his splitter. And it was after that win, Kurt said it could be a turning point in his season. Well, two starts later, it was that one hitter. Well, it appeared, Jerry, in that uh, one hitter, like everything was working, and he was hitting his spots with just about yeah, everything he's got. It's almost a perfect game. You know, all your pitches are working for you. You're putting your fastball where you want to put it. You're mixing in a curveball once in a while. You've got the good splitter, and they're catching the ball behind you. And it's got to line up just right, and it did until the eight and two thirds mark of that outing. And Shannon Stewart was not hanging around. So he went after that first pitch. Able to line it into right field. It had been seven and a third twice in his great career. And this one eight and two thirds as Euclid gobbles it up. Schilling's there. And there's two down. Well, last night, of course, we had the mayor on, and every time a Red Sox uh, hitter hits a home run up over that green monster, it means another job for a child here in the uh, city of Boston. Mike Lowell contributing to that right now with that home run, or I should say last inning with that home run. So somebody's going to work. Yeah, thanks to Monster.com and Boston.com Media. Fifteen times that has happened so far this season. And hopefully it'll happen a lot more. And Spielberg takes the strike from Kurt Schilling. He jumps ahead. He needs one of these quick and easy innings. After throwing 51 pitches through the first two innings tonight. Fastball upstairs. And the boys gets a piece, fouling it back. Red Sox in the midst of 15 consecutive games with the National League. Wrap up on June 24th. Outside frame by Baratek Schilling wanted it. And it's one and two. And again, by design, trying to go away and just off the outside corner. Sox so far five and two in early play in 2007. They're three and one here at Fenway Park. Uh, 21 and four versus the National League since the start of 2006. It matches the same record that the Detroit Tigers have 21 and four for the Majors' best interleague record during that span. And remarkably, the Red Sox have won their last 11 series against National League foes. Swing and a miss. Schilling's third strikeout. It's a one, two, three, third inning, but it's the Rockies on top three to one. Last half of the third inning back at Fenway, it's Lugo, Chris, and Euclid. So the Red Sox trailing by a pair down three to one. Josh Fogg back on the mound. As Lugo takes strike one. Well, we'd like to send some birthday wishes along to Joel Fell. Who's enjoying a birthday today? He's the executive producer of Red Sox Baseball. Happy birthday, Joel. I think Joel is 30, 35, somewhere in there. I'd say. I'm, uh, I'm going to guess. I'm going to guess 33. That's what I thought. Yeah. Well, somewhere in that neighborhood. Very successful at a very young age. We go jumping back out of the way, and it's one and two. And Lugo starting in the number nine spot last night for the first time of the season. It was one for three with a double and a run. 
after leading off 56 games. Helton in the foul ground, still going, and he makes the basket catch. He kept looking over towards the dugout, find out where he was, and he's able to make a very nice catch with a late lunge. Now, this ball, Proc, I mean, when the wind is blowing in this direction straight in, you know, it just keeps pushing the ball back toward the stands, and it made it a very difficult play for Helton. Ball popped up, looks routine. All of a sudden, the wind gets it. Now, Helton really has to sprint in unfamiliar territory here at Fenway Park and make the catch right in front of the dugout. Takes a peek, see how much, how much room he has, and then is able to make the catch. So again, nothing routine about these pop-ups, fly balls with this type of wind at Fenway Park. One down for Coco Crisp. Fly to center field first time up. So last night, Aaron Cook with 15 ground ball outs. Only one so far tonight for Josh Fogg. You know, Don, I feel kind of bad sometimes when we have these new teams come in the Fenway to play, and you know the weather's lousy like this. You know, and they leave and they go, "Man, that was bright." Brother, you know. <laughs> Welcome to Boston. I mean, you know, it's not always this bad. No. It was like when the Atlanta Braves were here; it rained the entire time they were here. We had yeah. the yeah. day-night doubleheader, and then they had a two and a half hour rain yeah. delay for the last game before taking off. You know they go wherever they go and that ooh that thing looks nasty. Yeah, that does not look good at all. They go wherever they go next and you know how'd you enjoy Fenway? Well, yeah, you know, <laughs> weather could have been better. <laughs> well, we're here at Fenway Park in Boston. Don Rosillo, Jerry Remy, and Tina Sebastio bringing you Boston Red Sox baseball in high definition and Adobe Digital 5.1 surround sound on Nesson. What do you call these Chamber of Commerce type nights? Yeah, it's a Chamber of Commerce night, yeah. I mean, you, you come here on a night like this, you don't want to leave. You know what I mean? <laughs> Here is Euclid with two outs in the inning. Base is empty. Euclid fly to right in the first inning. For dad and youngster, no bundle left. He's ready for anything. You know, the cold weather, if it <laughs> rains, he's got a raincoat on. <laughs> and there was really a shot of all of that happening here tonight. He's, he's been cloud covered and kind of threatened rain wise all day. He hasn't done very much. I met two folks uh, coming up the elevator from the pregame show. They were here. Visiting from Alaska and their first uh, visit to Fenway Park, they were all fired up about it. Euclid to left field and in for a base hit in front of Matt Holliday. And the Red Sox second hit of the night. Euclid gets the slider from Fog. That ball stays middle in. That's not quite the same as the one to Manny earlier. The one to Manny was higher than this. This one's much more hittable, and uh, Euclid drops it in in front of Holiday for the base hit. So the two out hit keeps Fogg away from the 1 2 3 inning. And gives David Ortiz a chance with a runner at first base and two down. He's 0 for 1 tonight as he fly to right field first time up. Reach base in all of his four plate appearances last night going three for three with a double and a walk. And he's now hit safely in 10 of his last 11 games. And Ramirez waits on deck there are two outs in the inning. Euclid at first base. Side and Fogg falls behind 3 0. Oh. We'll see if he stays with the off speed pitches on this 3 0 count. We know Ortiz gets the green light quite often on 3 0. Bob Apodaca, the pitching coach for the Rockies, is looking on. Ortiz 3 0 sends it out towards right center field and it's in for a hit. 
Tavares gathers it quickly. Euclid is headed for third. It's cut off. And it's first and third with two down for the Red Sox. Well, it is the green light, and it's not the fastball. I believe that was a changeup from Fogg, and Ortiz all over it for the base hit. The 3-0 changeup. They're expecting Big Poppy to have the green light 3-0, so they go with the changeup, but he stays back on it. Maybe, maybe Ortiz was looking for that pitch 3-0. Very seldom do you do that, but against a guy that throws a lot of them, he may have been. Last night we talked a lot about Manny Ramirez who never swings 3-0. 3 of 15. And David Ortiz 1 for 2 with no RBIs. Manny shoots it foul off to the right. Got another hanger right there too and he missed it. Fouled it straight back. Another breaking ball here, a slider that just kind of spins up the home plate, and Ramirez missing it. Bluff to third, throw to first, and it almost picked off Helton, who had to dive back to the bag, as did Ortiz lunging back to first. That was kind of borderline, I thought, by Fogg. You know, it's almost like you have to make that step to third base and and then step toward first base. That looked like it was all in one continuous motion. Very close, borderline. You see a lot of pitches step off when they do this, but he does not. He steps toward third and then goes to first base while still in contact with the rubber. We got the two outs here in the inning pretty quickly. Lugo and Crisp. Euclid's a single. Ortiz a single. It's first and third. As Manny takes ball two and it's two and one. Josh Fogg who comes into tonight with just a one and five record, a 5.06 earned run average. And he hits it on the ground into left field a base hit from third comes Euclid and it's a one run game now it's three to two Colorado as the Red Sox grab a run here with two outs in the bottom of the third inning all three hits have been on off speed pitches it was a slider to Euclid a change up to Ortiz and now a change up I believe to Manny Ramirez a little bit off balance on his front foot but still able to hook the ball in that hole between third and short. So with two outs the Red Sox pick up a run and all three hits on off speed pitches. So first and second now two down and here's J.D. Drew. Drew grounded out to second baseman Kaz Matsui in the second inning. Moved on that pitch and it's one and one. I don't have the official breakdown, but I think that Fogg has thrown more changeups in this game than he has fastballs. Pitch 60 for Fogg coming. And a broken back grounder fouls and that splinters. Change up again, back to back change ups uh, to JD Drew. And this one uh, right toward the end of the bat it will split to the bat and J.D. will have to try a new one. If you throw that many changeups, is it not as effective you use that many when you see that many over the well, course of the night. You know most hitters sit on fastball and adjust. I, I fog looking watching him pitch. I, I wouldn't be at all surprised like Ortiz for example in 3 0 count might have been looking for the changeup because he had a good solid swing against it. Ortiz at second, Ramirez at first, two down. Yeah. 
Down and in. And it evens up at two and two. That's the sinking fastball there, but he misses. Lowell waiting on deck. His home run got the Red Sox started. His, his home run number 12 of the season for Mike Lowell. With the Red Sox on the board at the time, trailing three to one. They're back within a run now. Ball three, full count to J.D. Drew. Well, he missed with back to back fastballs to run this count to three and two. Does he go back to the changeup or a breaking ball on the three two count? I think it's a hitter that surely have to be in the back of your mind. Bluffs as he goes off the backside, sending Ortiz to the bag at second. The 3 2 pitch. Looked like the changeup, and he struck him out with it. So it's the second strikeout for Fogg. It's a run for the Red Sox and a 3 2 Colorado lead at the end of three. Remember that if you need medical care while at Fenway, visit the Beth Israel Deaconess first aid stand behind Section 12. Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center is the official hospital of the Boston Red Sox. Talk about Sox appeal. Well, they met here and are getting married. Congratulations. Saturday they're getting married, huh? How about that? Wow. Um, what do you think, Jerry? Will this last? They look to be very happy. No, I think it. Uh, I think it will last. I, I, I really do. They, they look like a lovely couple, and hopefully the wedding's in the morning so they can catch the game at four o'clock. Good Schilling. Back on the mound for the Red Sox, enjoying a 1 2 3 third inning while his team rallied to get another run. And it's 3 to 2 now. Rockies on top, top half of the fourth. They were filming a Sox appeal here again last night at the ballpark. Second time, right? Or third. Second that we know of, yeah. yeah. They don't always tell us everything. Russ Ken tells me I'm on a need to know basis, which I already knew. <laughs> <laughs> they tell me nothing, and there's reasons for that. Yorbit Torbielba to third, low, able to pick it. And there's one away here in the fourth inning. Let's check back in with Tina Servasio. Don, Red Sox ownership isn't just about baseball anymore. Fenway Sports Group is presenting New England's first professional volleyball tournament in August. And you can see pro volleyball players like Holly McPeak, who's standing with me right now, and also Logan Tom, both Olympians. And Holly, what do you think about playing volleyball in the Boston area coming up this summer? Well, we're psyched. We haven't been here since 1993, and it's a great sports town, so we're excited to come back. And Logan, what do you think? What do you want to tell the fans out there to make sure that everybody comes out and sees how awesome you guys are in this exciting tournament. No, if you're a sports fan or just want to get out for a fun weekend, you definitely have to come out and see because we have great athletes out there and it's a fun time for the families. All right, everyone. So it's August 16th through the 19th at Waterworks in Marina Bay. So be there. All right. Where will we be? Are we on the road? 16th through the 19th. Imagine we are. That's fun. You ever watch that? I have. Yeah, it's it great stuff. Some places, I don't know if they're going to do it down at Waterworks, but they just roll the sand in. Yeah. yeah. Bring it in and play a little volleyball. And those pro beach volleyball scenes that you think are at the beach really aren't. I wanted to be a pro beach volleyball player. It just didn't uh, work out for me, but that was my dream. Kind of rough to look at you in a bathing suit. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to change my name and everything. I was going to be Tage Steele. <laughs> But it didn't work out. This job's cool too, but Troy Tulowitzki with one out. I wonder if they're looking for announcers for that. I didn't want to be an announcer for it. I... Never mind. This one is sent to right field. Struck well down the right field line towards the pole. And is a foul ball. 
Uh, the number nine man, Troy Tulowitzki, with a bid down the right field line, but back into the seats. And there's a case there where maybe that wind pushed it uh, in that foul direction. Tough to tell. Line drive, the wind may have not have had that much of an effect on it. That one lady uh, to the left of Tina, the uh, the first one, she was very tall. She must be one of the ones that are at the net that just spike it right in your face. Yes, Holly McPeak. The spiker. I don't know what they call it. Spike it over yeah. the top, yeah. Tulowitzki on uh, two hops to second base. Cora. And there's two down. Well, beginning June 26th, experience a brand new approach to the Wingland sports debate from Nesson and the Boston Globe with the Globe 10.0. Host Bob Ryan tackles the 10 hottest topics every Tuesday through Thursday. Watch the Globe 10.0 at 5.30, the new prime time, and get the point. Two down, back up to the top of the order for the Rockies, Willie Tavares. Winfield hit in the first inning, reached second on throwing error by Julio Lugo. And came around to score the first Rockies run. There's a chance that he'll try to bunt his way on, grabbing the attention as always. With Mike Lowell charging in from third base. Yeah, even with two outs, you know, a lot of times they'll say to a guy, well, they'll try to hit a double with two outs. The thing about him is if he bunts for a base hit, he can steal second and turn it into a double. Swinging away this time and fouls it down the left field line into the luxury boxes. I saw Catherine tapping down in the uh, campus alley while well, uh, Tina was yeah. doing that interview. Right in behind Tina. She's getting is ready she for. The, is she in the volleyball she is. Too? No. But she's getting ready for her Sunday appearance. She's going to be filling in for Tina on oh, Sunday. Really? Yeah. So she's trying to get a feel for campus alley down there. What Tina does as quick throw to first base. And quick chilling with a nice play to end the inning. Another one, two, three inning. In fact, he's retired seven in a row. Three, two, Rockies lead after three and a half. Bottom half of the fourth inning, three to two. The Rockies on top as Mike Lowell leads it off. Into the homer, first time up. A solo shot into the monster seats back in the second inning. And his 12th round tripper of the season. Back inside again for Fogg almost hit him and it's 2 and 0. Oh. Well, his last home run was on June 2nd against the Yankees. And about Mike Mussina. 31 of bats in between home runs for Lowell. Right side and through into right field a base hit. First time tonight the Red Sox have had the lead runner on. It's a base hit for Mike Lowell. Well, the bad and the good for Mike Lowell. First of all, uh, the tap down that third base line. He couldn't get a real good grip on the ball and throws it away. A run scores. That's the bad. Then the good. The home run on the breaking ball. So it gives up one run, but uh, gets it right back with the bat, and now picks up his second hit of the night, the base hit to the opposite field. It's always impressive to me when a guy hits a home run, and the next time up takes the ball the other way for a base hit. You know, he's not just thinking home run after home run. So Lowell now with a two for two night going. And there's Veritek who walked his first time up. Sometimes you get guys that get a home run in their first at bat, and they go home run crazy for the rest of the night. And have some bad swings. Were you one of those guys who all of a sudden thought you were a home run hitter? Only happened to me once. <laughs> <laughs> Ended up one for ten in a double header. There goes Lowell, a little hit and run, and Baratek drives it to left. But back there is Holiday on the base of the warning track, and having to retreat was Lowell. You know, when you watch the Red Sox all season long, like we do, it seems like the guy they hit and run the most with is Jason Baratek. Line shot that time, but to right at Holiday in left field. We've talked about it many times when sometimes guys are struggling that it helps to kind of lock in when asked to do a hit and run, or you know you got to make contact. Yeah, that's exactly right. A lot of managers will use that play with guys that are in slumps. 
Well, it's Cora showing bunt pulls back and takes ball one. Yeah, I had a game uh, in New York. It was actually a double header, and in the first at bat, I hit a home run off Catfish on it. So I'm thinking, geez, you know, maybe I get another yeah. one tonight. I'm a home run hitter now. Yeah, one for ten by the time a double header <laughs> was over. <laughs> Swinging like huge swings. I mean, did you shorten it up at all? Oh, I, you know, the short porch. I figured I could pull every. You know, it, was, it was a very smart approach by me. <laughs> Worked out great. You know, for a guy that had you know multiple like, seven career home runs, that was a brilliant, brilliant approach I had that night. We yeah. had just left Fenway too. We played the Red Sox and we went back to uh, the Yankee Stadium and played the Yankees. You had seven total home runs, right, in your career? Seven big ones. Yeah. Four in one season. That's right. What year was that? Was that with the Angels? Yeah. And then they expected that every year out of me. I couldn't do that every year. <laughs> hope it was an arbitration year. No. Well, <laughs> geez, we hope we get those four out of Remy every year. You know, <laughs> didn't happen. Yeah, you had a lot of other gifts. Yeah. And it became a Red Sox Hall of Famer. So it all worked out pretty good. Yeah, better than expected. Two one pitch in there for a strike and it's two and two. And to this day I still think I could have had another home run that night. <laughs> <laughs> Was anything close? Did you get anything to the track? Ah, nothing, nothing close. Nothing close. That would have made a huge difference because it could have been eight career instead of seven. <laughs> Two and two to Cora here with one out and Lowell at first base. How about spring training home runs? Did you have any spring training home yeah, runs that didn't count? A lot of those. I popped a couple, yeah. <laughs> I popped one in a fantasy game. I went down to really? fantasy camp. Yeah. First at bat, the guy knocked me down, and I got up and I took him deep on the next pitch. And you were angry. With an aluminum bat. Did you talk smack all the way down the first oh, base? Yeah, I line gave it to him all the way around the bases. <laughs> Some punk, you know. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna knock him down on the first pitch. I don't think he was trying, but so I took that aluminum <laughs> bat out of the bat rack <laughs> and took it deep. Crushed it. <laughs> to right center, falling in for a hit. Lowell touches second and heads for third base. The throw goes in that direction. It's cut off. Now Cora a little overzealous and rounding the bag at first has to dive back to the bag. And all of a sudden, it's first and third with one away. And another base hit on the changeup, this time Cora. So it seems like more and more Red Sox hitters are, are trying to stay back and be patient uh, with Fogg. Look for that off speed pitch, and he drops it in for the base hit. You see Cora round first base, and then he decides to maybe go to second and then quickly has to dive back. No throw from the cutoff. Well, the story of the 1967 American League champion Red Sox is now available in a double DVD set. Impossible to forget relives the impossible dream season and is available at BJ's. Pick up your copy today. I'm sure it's been a lot of fun for those guys this season. Of course, we saw him on opening day. We saw Reggie Smith, who visited with us as well. We said Hawk Harrelson up here in the booth with us, but they've had a number of events this season they've gotten together for them. It's been a lot of fun to see those guys. You know, for me growing up uh, as a kid, that was uh, special for me, and I, I'd like to have that DVD. I really would. Well, we have connections. We go fouled out his first time up as he takes a strike. Let off the inning with a single to right. Veritek lined out to left. And a hit and run bid. And bluff to third, bluff to first. He seems to be missing his step still. And as he gets it over there at first base, it's a very quick move. Tried it earlier. And almost faked out his first baseman as well as David Ortiz was on the bag at first. A defensive swing from Lugo who does go around and it's 0 and 2. That's one of those uh, fastballs a two seam fastball that keeps chasing the hands of Julio Lugo. I 
Actually, you start you swing and you just hope it doesn't hit you. Struck him out as Lugo strikes out. Third strikeout for Josh Fogg tonight. Two down in the end. Went back to the fastball. It's supposed to be down and in. It's down and away, and no contact from Lugo. 34th time that Julio has struck out on the season. So two down, first and third. And Coco takes the ball outside. We mentioned the numbers for Fogg, one and five of the 5.06, but he has really not got much in the way of run support. He has received three runs or less in nine of ten starting assignments this season. The only game in which he got more than three runs of support was April 25th at the Mets. He got 11 runs. To second base, Matsui will flip the second for the force out that ends the inning. He's got three runs of support tonight. He's got a 3 2 lead after four. For the fifth inning, 3 to 2, the Rockies on top. Kurt Schilling off to a tough start tonight. He's certainly settled down, retiring the last seven batters in a row. And the pitch count still high. This is going to be pitch number 76 of the night to begin things here in the top of the fifth. And three ground ball outs last inning. And the strike to Kazmat Sui, who's one for two tonight with an RBI. On the right field line as a twist foul back into the seats. Field a base hit and Kazmat Sui's he's got his second hit of the night. Let's check in with Tom Karen, TC. Well, thank you, Don. It's our New England Toyota dealer game break, and A Rod does it again. His major league leading 25th homer with Bobby Abreu aboard. The bats are going for the Yankees. A 7 1 lead. Hideki Matsui just hit a homer, closing in on their eighth straight win, guys. All right, Tom, thank you. It's 3 to 2 here. Rockies on top. And we knew that Yankees offense was not going to stay stagnant all season long. And they've won seven in a row. Now it's the lead tonight and starting to put it together. And Red Sox with a good lead on top by nine and a half games, but the Yankees are starting to wake up. Well, they're swinging the bats. You know, you've got a guy like Abreu who finally has started to get hot, and they're also pitching very well through this streak that they've uh, they've gone through recently. To left field, another base hit. Man, he's in there quickly and fires to second base. Playing very shallow as always in left. And we'll try to get Matsui at second base. The throw very late, and it's first and second. Nobody out. Now, frustrating for Schilling is uh, you see how shallow Manny is. Now he's going to charge the ball and take a throw to second base and try to force him, but uh, Matsui beats it. After very easy third and fourth inning, Manny loosening up his arm. We're getting ready to take off. I'm not sure which. Three to two with the Rockies on top, but they got first two on. I'll tell you what, you know, Manny always plays shallow, but to me, it's almost like he's almost playing shortstop now. He is really shallow. There he is. Strike two, and it's 0 2 to Todd Helton. I think that's where Schilling wants him because, you know, Kurt's very involved with the defense. No, I think if he wanted him back deeper, he would tell him he'd push him back.
That's the other thing tonight, the, the way the wind is blowing, as we mentioned many times, straight in at a pretty good gust. Anything that's hit high is going to come back anyway. One and two, the count to Todd Helton. The Lojack Caught Stealing Sweepstakes is back again for another season. Visit lojack.com slash caught stealing for details and to enter to win. Lojack, the only stolen vehicle recovery system operated by the police. Nobody out here in the top half of the fifth inning. Red Sox trail 3-0. They're back within a run. And the Rockies here threatening in the fifth. The first two have reached Matsui and Holiday. Well, one two pitch to Helton. Lines it foul back into the seats. The Chilling had retired seven batters in a row coming into the inning. He's given up a total of eight hits tonight to the Rockies over four plus innings. Career 333 hitter in the major leagues. Career that started back in 1997. Last year, kind of a low year for him, hitting at just 302. And as he follows it back to the backstop, one and two. The home run numbers 42 and 49, 2000 and 2001. And have gone down since 30, then 33, 32, 20, and last season a total of 15. Look at the breakdown for him. So the power numbers have been down. This year he's got six homers and 29 runs batted in to center field. And Coco Crisp is there for out number one. The tickets are now on sale for the second annual Futures at Fenway doubleheader at Fenway Park on August 11th. The low price twin bill is presented by Filene's Basement and features the Portland and Lowell clubs this year. See RedSox.com for more details. Well, as the pitch count continues to rise for Kirk Schilling, Kyle Snyder up in the Red Sox pen. The pitching line is brought to you by Nissan. 87 pitches now for Schilling in four and a third innings. He runs two of them earned. He has three strikeouts and a walk tonight. The runs for the Rockies so far coming in the first two innings. He gave up a run in the first two in the second. Now tip held on to by Veritek, and it's 0 2 now to Garrett Atkins. Garrett Atkins, a fifth round pick by the Rockies. So two full seasons now in the major leagues with Colorado. And last year really exploded onto the scene with a 329 batting average in 157 games last year. Strikes out at Schilling's fourth strikeout of the night, two down. That's a great splitter there by Schilling. He follows the fastball up with the splitter down and away. Picks up the strikeout. You know, when you look at this lineup before tonight's game, only three members of the starting lineup have ever faced Schilling. Holiday, Helton, and uh, Terry Albla. Terry Albla. Help me, Don. I can't. Terry Albla. Terry Alba. Very good. <laughs> they think. Brad Hoff is 0 for 2. And drives one to deep right field. Drew headed back at the track looking up and that is gone. 
A three run home run for Brad Hopp. He is ninth home run of the season. And it puts the Rockies on top six to two. Well, this looks like the straight changeup, too, from Kirk Schilling that stays up in the zone. You see the grip of the changeup right there, and it just stays up high, and Hopp jumps all over it. So after the first two hitters get on, back to back outs by Schilling, then the three run home run. Well, Ryan Spillboard, who is 0 for 2 in the game. Billboards is 0 for 2. He's grounded out to second and struck out swinging. Which has popped up foul off to the right, and it's 1 and 1. I think the fans are booing out there in the right field. I think they want the, the fan who got the ball to throw it back on the field of play. Foul over by the Rockies dugout just in behind it. And it's one and two. This includes tonight over the last seven starts. Take out the one hitter and the earned run average would be 5.56. Check swing foul back towards the backstop. One and two. Home run. He had given up the three run home run to Posada in the sixth inning after that 29 minute rain delay. Against the Yankees, in which he received a no decision chase from the game after five innings, nine hits, and four runs in that outing against New York here at Fenway Park. Full count now to Ryan Spillboards with two outs and the base is empty. The 11th home run allowed by Kurt Schilling this season and leads the staff as far as home runs allowed this season. Held off to the right back and out of play. Next on the list is Daisuke Matsuzaku, who's allowed nine home runs. The Red Sox as a team have allowed the fourth fewest in the American League. Swing and a miss. He strikes out Spillboard for the second time, but a three-run shot for Brad Hopp as the Rockies on top six to two.